Hello everyone and welcome to our virtual vegan thanks living. We're live on Zoom, also on Jane Unchained and Vegan Spirituality. Now let's introduce the team of hosts who will keep things moving. I'm Lisa Levinson, one of your hosts for the first hour. I campaign for sustainable activism at In Defense of Animals. I founded Vegan Spirituality and co-founded the Interfaith Vegan Coalition. My co-host is the compassionate and talented Vanessa Marceau, who will introduce herself. Thank you so much, Lisa. Hello, everyone. So great to see you. Happy Thanks Living, all you beautiful people. What a community. It takes a village to make a community, as my partner, George McQuaid, says. I'm Vanessa Marso, as Lisa said. I founded Alora Wellness, a global vegan organic wellness center, to show that you can live wonderfully, beautifully, abundantly, richly without harming the planet, animals, or your health. We can live in harmony with nature. And I'm so thrilled to be part of this. And I just want to let you all know the theme really quickly before I introduce our next two hosts. The theme, just to keep in mind, I invite everyone to just ponder this. Thanksgiving has such a spotty past. Can we going forward reimagine, recreate a Thanksgiving that's inclusive of animals, of indigenous people, of BIPOC? of LGBTQIAA, of people of all ages and abilities. If we can have a celebration that doesn't harm or exclude anyone, but embraces them and goes some way towards being mindful of and making some kind of acknowledgement and reparations towards all the beings who have been so harmed in the past. Going forward, we're creating a loving, compassionate celebration for all of us to enjoy. With that being said, I want to introduce our two hosts who are going to take over for us in the second hour, and that is the amazing and lovely Jane Elizabeth and the mega-talented Sean Hill. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely a pleasure to be here, y'all. And I'm just grateful and supportive of anything with community and love like you all have and that you're all bringing here to the, today's event. So much love and I'm happy to be here. 100%. I'm so grateful to be a part of this amazing community. It's so inclusive. It's so loving. And I think Jerry said it best, you know, peace begins on your plate. It begins in your kitchen. And that is what we are celebrating today. So thank you all for being here. And thank you so much to Vanessa for um, reaching out and inviting us to be a part of this. So just so full of gratitude today for all of you. Well, we also want to thank the incredible community of volunteers who are working behind the scenes on this event. And it's my pleasure to introduce mediator and leadership trainer, Dave Rubin, who has helped organize this virtual event and also the traditional gathering at Rancho Park in Los Angeles on Thanksgiving Day for more than two decades. Dave will share a bit about the history of this event with you now. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about the event. So traditionally, this event that we're doing is an in-person event. It takes place in Los Angeles every year at uh, Cheviot Hills Recreation, Se Recreation Center, also known as Rancho Park. And it is my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, annual event in Los Angeles. It's the biggest vegan potluck of the year in the area and anywhere, as far as I know. Three or four hundred people typically show up. And because of concerns about COVID-19, we decided to do a virtual event this year. So we're able to include people from all around the world. I think that the event at Rancho Park is is uh, particularly unique because it's something that's organized by the community for the community. It's not since the late 90s, or in the early 90s, it was started by Earth Save and the Vegetarian Society, they would host it. But in the late 90s, it just became an organic community event. And starting in 2013, it's something that we've really consciously organized. We'd have meetings where everyone could participate and have an equal voice. Anyway, this year we're doing the virtual event. I'm so grateful you all could join us and thank you for hearing what I had to share. Oh, thanks so much, Dave. Well, we're always, we always begin the annual 
um, Rancho Park Potluck with an opening ceremony. And today is no different. I'm honored to introduce our ceremony facilitators. Nandini Jaya Prasad is a conscious entrepreneur and yogini and 24 year vegan Charlotte Cressy, who is on a quest to manifest a vegan paradigm shift worldwide through her coaching, online courses and writing. Take it away. We've got Charlotte. Let's start again. Hello, Hi, ladies. Hello. <laughs> I'm Nandini. And I'm Charlotte. And we're so excited to get the party started. As we gather together across time and space, we connect with this beautiful earth that is our home. We call upon all of Earth's creatures, including humanity, creation in its entirety. We, we sense, sense the love, love vibration, vibration that, that is everything. everything. Love is the very source of our being. It is that radiant spark in each of us. This love, life force, which creates, dissolves, and recreates. This love and peace dwelling within that also encompasses and envelops everything. We feel ourselves held and connected with all that exists in this moment. Knowing that we live in a participatory paradigm, wherein our thoughts, words, and deeds not only make a difference, but they actually shape reality. We connect with our hearts, feeling joy for our community, our vegan communion with each other and with the earth, knowing that we are the ones that have been called upon to usher in a new earth, a vegan paradigm shift. We invite into this circle our future selves, our best selves, knowing that no matter what is occurring outside, we are the directors of our destiny. And we, as vegans worldwide, are co-creating a happier, healthier world for all beings. I invite you to take a moment to enliven in every cell of your being with gratitude for yourself, being the harbingers of joy that you are. You are here on this planet to unveil unique gifts and talents that only you can bring, only you can dance your dance, and only you can sing your song. Noticing a sense of thankfulness that you have incarnated on planet Earth at the perfect time. You are special. I am grateful for you. We are grateful for each other. Together, we can work wonders. wonders. I invite you into a moment of awareness for the myriad voices of animals. Let us tune in and listen to what they have to share with us. Closing our eyes and awakening to the billions of animals worldwide feeling so glad that we can help enlighten humanity to rightful relationship with animals through veganism. We call in, in particular, the energy of the turkey as archetype and turkey as individuals. Turkeys are sometimes called the earth eagle. They have a long history of association with spirituality and the honoring of mother earth. Turkey as archetype is a symbol of all the blessings that the earth contains along with the ability to utilize them to their greatest advantage and to the greatest advantage of humanity. So we choose to use our bounty, our harvest, all of our blessings wisely and well. So gently opening your eyes. Sweet beloved turkeys and all animals, we know you hear our call that we are here standing for and with you. We hear, feel, and sense your greatness. We know who you really are, though most of humanity is blind to your beauty, power, and right to autonomy. We are working on your behalf. We ask you to please guide us as vegans and as humans aspiring to embody love. Good. Now that the animals are present and here with us, let us light some candles. With this light, let us ignite the compassion and love within each one of us. With this fire, I ignite the power to inspire love, beauty, peace, and joy for all beings. Okay. 
It is finished in beauty. It is finished in beauty. It is finished in beauty. And it is done unto us according to our beliefs. There is one loving energy which envelops everything. There is no way to be outside of this loving presence. This love dwells within each of us like a jewel chalice. Our bodies hold this love, this beauty, this grace and power. We feel our hearts so full of love and gratitude that we cannot help but smile with the joy that is life. We declare the reality of a vegan world meaning humans living in harmony with all animals, all animals free to hop, leap, skip, and dance. I declare this space open for something very special and magical to occur here today. Aha moments, healing, connections, and alchemical amplification of each of our paths in service of this vegan world and for each of us to experience utmost gratitude and joy every day. We give thanks for all that is, thanks for each other, Thanks for our vegan community worldwide. We give thanks also for the pre-vegans who will soon be joining our love revolution. We give thanks for what is unfolding around us knowing that all is occurring for our highest good and for the greatest good for future humanity. As it is spoken, so it shall be. As I release this word, it is cloaked in material form. So, so it, it is, is. Blessed, blessed be. be. So beautiful. Thank you so much, ladies. I, my heart is full of joy. Thank you very much. And now Vanessa is going to introduce our next speaker. Yes, that was amazing. And I just um, am so thrilled to have you all on board. And it is such an honor to have that opening ceremony, which is so loving and accepting of all these beings that we want to embrace in our celebration. I sort of had a heart pain this morning. A friend sent me a meme that had a dead animal on it, and I just want to take it all in and send out loving vibes to all our pre-vegan friends. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce our next guest who hardly needs introduction. She is an award-winning author and TV journalist. Jane Velez Mitchell has started a revolutionary global platform to highlight the plight of animals, which traditional media has largely ignored. Her reach has extended into having over 70 correspondents throughout the world reporting on JNN, bringing awareness and empathy to them. She's graciously agreed to allow us to air this program on her channel. And so with great honor and gratitude, I introduce to you the amazing, powerful, and never silent voice for the animals, Jane Velez Mitchell. And unmute yourself, Jane. My, my apologies. See, there we go. What an introduction. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, I always tell everybody to unmute, and there I am doing it myself. Um, all the people who are in these boxes, so many of them are Jane Unchained contributors. So I actually wanted to call it Unchained. But guess what? There are too many porn sites associated with that phrase. So I had to go to Jane Unchained. <laughs> <laughs> but I think about Jane Unchained as more of unchaining the matriarchal because Jane is kind of a stand-in name for female as John is a stand-in name for male. So Jane Unchained is unchaining the matriarchal. And we have so many contributors. It's such a team effort. Renee Marinkovich is right there, who's one of our contributors. Um, you have... Kim Delgado, who does so much. Paige Parsons Roach, who was our booker, who works around the clock. Jane Elizabeth, who is our voice of reason, along with doing some great shows. And then so many people who contribute, like Sean Hill uh, with his incredible poetry. And I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out because I can't see all the people, but just know that I am filled with gratitude to all the contributors. It is a team effort. 
and it gives me hope for our world that all of these folks get together as volunteers, uh, buying the food, cooking the food, going live. And we're gonna have the amazing Tracy Childs on in just a moment, uh, making an incredible thanks living dish. So I just want you to know, along with Vanessa Marceau, who is not only an amazing contributor, but she does, a lot of times you think you're going to do a cooking segment and there she is on a pole, spiraling downward on a pole, looking incredibly sexy. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what, what a life break live this is gonna be. And then we have the amazing Lisa Levinson, who is one of our allies and who, for as loud as I am, she is calm and serene. And we are a good balance because I'm always agitated and running around and she's just like, okay, let's meditate, let's calm down. Let's speak in a, an indoor voice, Jane. <laughs> so I love that. We're all, different, we're all different characters and we all bring our strengths and our character defects to bear, but we all are united by a common goal to wake up this world, to wake this world up that our disrespect of the natural world and the beings who inhabit that natural world is what has gotten us into this mess. And so as we hit this day, thanks living is what I call it, um, let's, redouble our efforts to wake up the world because the clock is ticking people and every single one of us on this zoom is a crucial change agent to get us to the tipping point we would not be here if this was a plant-based world and if we want to avoid future pandemics we need to hit the tipping point and help this culture evolve to a plant-based world I mean, that is the bottom line. So I would say, whatever your feelings about this day, uh, which I think has become, it's wonderful to celebrate and give thanks, but I think that there's a lot of forces at work that feti fetishize this to the point where it's become this thing that nobody can even live up to. When it could be a very simple moment of giving thanks and having a moment of gratitude, which I did this morning, and, and just experienced a moment of gratitude for all the things I have and okay, that's it. I don't need to kill an animal. I don't need to buy a bunch of junk that I don't need. So we are the change agents and the truth tellers to a culture that is vigorously keeping those blinders affixed. And I use an addiction metaphor. I'm a recovering alcoholic with 25 years of sobriety. So I'm not coming up from up here. If you come from judgment and I'm better than you, it doesn't work. Uh, I have the worst instincts on the planet. If it's bad for me, I want it. And so uh, I thought when I was in my disease of alcoholism that I would never be able to give it up. I tried everything just drinking on days that ended in why? Wait a second, that's every day. Um, I tried just drinking on the weekends, just only wine, you know, alcoholics try all of that stuff. And what I realized is that I was never able to successfully negotiate with that one substance. And when you can never successfully negotiate with someone or something, you need to walk away. And I use that, I say that because it's a metaphor for what's happening with our society today with meat and dairy. Our society cannot successfully negotiate with this substance. We've tried. You know, people, oh, I'll go for skim milk. I'll go for meatless Monday. It's not working. And to use another addiction phrase, first it's fun, then it's fun with problems, and then it's just problems. And I experienced that firsthand. And that's what's happening as a global culture with the human race's relationship with meat and dairy. So, you know, Norman Rockwell painting, family barbecue, all of that where the commercial industry knows how to interweave 
certain things that humans are intrinsically uh, predestined to crave, family values, upward mobility, patriotism, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, sex appeal, whatever it is, they know how to weave all that into uh, commercials that promote meat and dairy. So, you know, people would say first it was fun, then it was fun with problems. Okay, we started having the hurricanes and the climate change. Now it's just problems. Okay, our whole world is in a bleep hole right now because of our toxic relationship with the natural world and our particularly horrific addiction to what is even more destructive than crack, which is meat and dairy. So I just urge every single one of you, you are the change agents. And again, I, the reason I talk about my uh, recovery from uh, alcoholism, which is one day at a time, you only get a daily reprieve, but I thought I, I had given up. And one hallmark of addiction is incomprehensible demoralization. That's when you hit bottom and you look in the mirror and say, was that me? Oh my God, who was that person? It was me. But that opens up a window of a moment of clarity where you can see the situation objectively and take action. So for 25 years and a half, I have not one day at a time had to have a drink, okay? But I thought I could never give it up. People who think they can never give up eating meat and dairy can hit bottom and have a moment of clarity and free themselves. Because just like I thought when I gave up alcohol that I'd never enjoy a sunset again because I used to go out with my glass of wine and look at the sunset. I would never be able to enjoy doing this, that, and the other again. I would never go to a party. How can I go to a wedding and toast the bride and groom without a glass of champagne? Well, now I still go to weddings, but I just don't make a fool of myself. Well, maybe even if I make a fool of myself at them, I remember it the next day. So the point is that even though we think that, oh my gosh, nobody's ever gonna wake up no matter what we do, no matter these plagues that hit people and they can't connect the obvious dots that this is a zoonotic disease that jumped from animals to humans and was first spotted amongst those who had visited a retail slaughter market and that there are other zoonotic diseases that turn into pandemics, mad cow disease, swine flu, avian flu, they can't connect the dots, the best and the brightest of our society who can understand the nuances of the Mueller investigation cannot connect the dots that are so obvious. And we, we sometimes wanna give up hope and throw up our hands and say, well, just as I thought I could never give up drinking, but I hit bottom and then I had a psychic shift and I realized something. And this was the, how I would define it. Instead of saying, I won't drink today, I said, Oh my gosh, I don't have to drink today. And this is the change we need people to make. Instead of saying, I won't have that hamburger today. I won't have that, those ribs. I don't have to have that. And we've made it so much easier with all these other options. You know, we all know that the meat and dairy sector is really under assault by the plant-based alternatives that are skyrocketing. You can go to the Good Food Institute and see all the statistics. It's arguably either the fastest or certainly one of the fastest growing segments of the supermarket space. You had McDonald's. However you feel about McDonald's, it is a step in reducing the amount of suffering that they are now finally gonna have a meatless burger. They were one of the holdouts in the fast food space. So I think we are hitting we, some people think we've already hit the tipping point. Some people think we're about to. Whatever this hypothetical hit tipping point is, I just want everybody to, to double down on their activism in good cheer and um, know that change is occurring. And I always quote Dr. Silas Rao, who in my opinion is a genius. He is the founder of Climate Healers and he is trying to create, he is, excuse me, not trying. He is creating a vegan world by 2026 using the same methodology that they use to um, double the internet speeds, triple, quadruple. He was involved in that as well. And he says, while well, my heart goes out to all the people who are suffering, those who've lost their lives, lost their loved ones, lost their jobs, and it's terrible and we have complete compassion. This is nature doing an intervention on the human race and saying to humans, go to your rooms, you've been bad. Think about what you've done and come out more evolved or 
the human species might not be around for much longer. So I, when I heard that, had tremendous faith in what he said. And I said, you're right. I am powerless over that. The only thing I have power over is my own actions and reactions. So I changed my perspective. I'm not taking the pandemic personally. You know, and there was a moment there where I was kind of taking it personally, like, why me? And I'm thinking, wait, it's happening in the whole world. What are you saying? Why me? <laughs> you know, so I would say if you, if you are feeling a little bit alone or whatever, adjust your perspective. And if you adjust your perspective and realize that this is nature, nature is taking charge and doing for really wake, trying to wake up the human race, but we can help by showing that there is an alternative and it will save lives, uh, human lives and animal lives and save the planet. So that's pretty much uh, all I really have to say about this day. Um, my, final, my final thing is, I don't think that we should get too hung up if we're not with our family. I was a reporter in mainstream media for 40 years. And because I didn't have kids, I was always assigned to work the holidays. So for me, I'm used to not really, celebrating holidays and uh i would say that don't be don't become a prisoner of that mentality because then you're going to uh, feel you know somehow victimized or deprived it is thursday as well so you know back to you vanessa <laughs> it is thursday as well i love that holidays are kind of an arbitrary time i just think of them more as this arbitrary day we've chosen to remind ourselves to be thankful to embrace everyone and to be grateful for all the abundance. And I so resonate with your point, Jane, about mother nature. Had I been mother nature, I would have had far less patience with the human species for all that we've done. I would have <laughs> ended things a lot sooner. So I think now's our chance to really make a big difference and show that we can take good care of this planet and of each other. And I am so grateful for you being here, Jane. You are such a light in this dark world with your humor and vulnerability. And so many people in our comments have resonated with your powerful talk. So thank you for being here. We so are grateful to you. Right back now up. I'm going to, yes, thank you. I'm gonna now introduce Tracy Childs, who is a chef, health and cooking coach specializing in whole food, plant-based nutrition for optimal health. She's also director and co-founder of Tracy's Real Foods, Veg Appeal, and Plant Diego. And she's working with Marina Yanai Triner, who is a transformational coach for sensitive humans who are high achievers and whole food plant-based educator and recipe creator. They are together going to do our lunch break live. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much. Um, now, Marina is at her own home, so we got to bring her in as a host, hopefully. Um, you guys on that? So I'll just start, of course, and um, then Marina will join in when she's here. Um, well, so here we go. I've been unmuted. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Marina. Uh, so Marina and I are good friends. We've known each other for a long time. And we met through uh, veganism and through social media and all that good stuff. And um, we've been kind of together through all this uh, pan pandemic thing. And in a, in a, from afar, we got a little group chat going that's saving my life, I think, with our totally. other vegan friends. Yeah, yeah, it's just we share. And um, so she shared that she was creating this amazing um, dish for Thanksgiving. And so I thought, well, let's share that too, because I, I love it. And I, and I wanna also share with you guys um, what I've been making for years. So I've been vegan since 1990 and, um, <laughs> and vegetarian since I was 17. Okay, so, um, and that wasn't 1990, <laughs> uh, it was a long, that was 1978. Okay, so um, aging myself a little bit, but I raised my children this way. Um, they've never had meat. And so for us, um, Thanksgiving tradition is we like to still 
enjoy the foods that we all grew up on, but veganized. And so I thought I would share those things with you guys, uh, the recipes I've developed over the years. And, and I had put the, I will, um, Tracy's Real Foods blog will have the link to both Marina's and my recipes. Um, and so and I just think people should get creative with what they're making and, um, and then also discuss um, different ways you might, you know, celebrate the holiday. It doesn't have to be along the American traditions of the gravy and the potatoes and, and the protein, <laughs> um, which is what we've developed uh, over the years just to, to do it to kind of, um, also just to include my extended family over the years too. And, um, and try and just let them know that it's very important to me that it be vegan, that it um, not be, that be cruelty free, that we don't have that carcass sitting there uh, haunting me. <laughs> and so that's- Yeah, and I'm so you know, lucky that my whole family is vegan, yay, so. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so mine has been a progression, you know, um, and and over the years, my family has accepted my extended family. They live here in San Diego too. Marina and I live in San Diego, and they've accepted that Thanksgiving is going to be um, vegan at my house. They they can celebrate Thanksgiving uh, at their own houses their own way, but when it's me, it's going to be vegan. So, um, uh, so I wanted to share with you guys uh, first. Let me see. Um, this is what I, I've been making over the years, and yeah, can you guys, can you see that? It's the tofu. Yep. Mm, so, I've, uh, I think I've had it. It's so good. Yes, and then uh, also Marina has been uh, part of our group that has created the Gratitude Food Fest over the years, and um, that's what we do in San Diego. So that's why this is near and dear to my heart that you guys are celebrating your tradition that has happened in LA all these years. We've... Uh, for several years done the Gratitude Food Fest, which is the Plant Diego version. And last time I actually made this tofu dish for um, however many guests we had. What do we have, like 120 or something like that? Yeah. And I got the, the tofu donated and it was wonderful. So, and then we made gravy and we made the meal. It was fun. And we did, uh, we do potluck sometimes too. But anyways, that's the the, the main dish and what I'll do with that is I'll put it out on this uh, baking tray and then bake it to heat it up. So it's just, uh, it's amazing. It's just got this great marinade on it. That's a bunch of herbs and spices and um, you'll see the recipe. So it's really, it's really easy to make, but I also, oh, I wanted to show you the pieces of the tofu too. So the, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> you can see that they're kind of tofu uh, shaped a little bit let me get a better one they're shaped a little bit like you know the traditional carcass piece or whatever <laughs> so i just cut it a special way everybody really loves it looks really great um for the potatoes look at this Woo! uh there's the potatoes and um what i do with the potatoes is i just uh cut it cut them up small and put less water in, I don't boil them, and I just uh, mix it up in the pot here and um, with milk. I use some non-dairy milk and some spices. Some oh, I love that one. I always use that from Trader Joe's, that um, soy this milk. milk? Too. Yeah, it's like yeah. the most budget-friendly soy milk ever. Yeah, and everybody says, well, what should I use in mashed potatoes? Well, use something that's unsweetened, you don't want, or vanilla. You don't want, you know, sugar in your mashed potatoes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just show you real quick uh, how I do it. Now, I, you can also just mash with your with a potato masher or you can use your beaters. I'm going to use the beaters. So um, you just do it when they're hot. Leave it right in the pan. Add some milk in here. And I love this seasoning. This is spike. This is a, a all-purpose seasoning that just lends itself really well. I've got some uh, garlic already cooked in these potatoes. So then you can just, oops, it would help if I plugged it in. <laughs> <laughs> I used a fork. I actually also made mashed potatoes, which I'll show you. And I used the fork to- You just used them. a fork? Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that in the picture. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is if you want it to be a little more like traditional.
Gracie, you have to do a blender dance or a mixer dance while doing that. <laughs> Better. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So look. Now I like them a little bit lumpy and we left some of the peels on. These are russet potatoes. But you can do this with any potatoes, guys. You can do it with, um, you can do it with mashed potatoes. I mean, uh, sweet potatoes too. And then, you know, what's nice about this is you've got it still in your pan so you can put the lid on it and keep it warm. <laughs> mm. Or you can heat it up again if you want. So that's my way, I don't drain it. I don't drain it. Oh, and then let me show you the gravy. So this is the gravy I made. Mm. So that is, you just, uh, uh, the trick with that is I blend um, arrowroot and vegetable broth and um, the arrowroot is the thickener. There's no like mixing with a fork and worrying about lumps, just to throw it on the blender and then pour it in the pan and let it thicken up. <laughs> but I put it with some, um, mushrooms, I've sauteed mushrooms and sauteed some onions first. And, uh, you know, so we love that. And um, then we just do green bean casserole. Wait, can you see that now? Yep. That's the green bean casserole. So that's, the, that's uh, I am whole food plant-based, but this is our cheater food here for Thanksgiving. These. <laughs> These things are fried in oil, but they're from Trader Joe's and they're delicious and they add such a nice crunch. And so the green beans is just parboiled green beans with um, this mushroom portobello stuff. And this is vegan, people, it's vegan. People don't know what's vegan sometimes. And so it's good to know these things. You can just buy that and mix it up, add a little salt and pepper and bake it. So that's super easy. And then we did stuffing. All right, so that's the stuffing. So um, let's get over to what's going on in Marina's kitchen and what she did. I really like what she did because, okay, I did all these dishes and she did something that's all encompassing in one thing and it's got everything. <laughs> so. Well, the thing is that I never grew up celebrating um, the no. holiday. I actually grew up in Israel and when we moved here, we never celebrated Thanksgiving. But now that, you know, all my friends celebrate and everything, my parents are like, oh, we feel cheated. We want another holiday. <laughs> so yeah, there's not enough Jewish holidays, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. We have, it's too little. Um, so <laughs> we've added this. So the cool thing about this dish, and let me show you, it's got two layers um, oh, and all, the whole recipe Tracy will link to, which is on my Instagram at soul in the raw. It's already posted there. So you can go check it out. The cool thing is that you get three meals out of it. So the bottom portion is something so a lot of people make it with just lentils, but I decided to make a Arabic Palestinian dish called majadara, which is just like rice and lentils. And you can spice it up as you want, but on the blog, I spiced it up the traditional way. My best friend's Palestinian. So she literally taught me this in my kitchen years ago. I love said, that your best friend is Palestinian. That's a year yeah. really. So and that she, is she always tells me that this is the, the like, the lazy mom's meal like when moms are like not wanting to cook a ton this is what they make so it's super simple but it's really really yummy it's just brown rice and lentils and onions and a bunch of spices and i always spice it up differently today i spice it up differently as well and then what well, name some of the spices you put in there um so traditionally it's turmeric cumin black pepper and salt just that um, so that's, that's how you make it. And then once it's done, you're gonna put it actually right into your big pie pan and you're gonna mix it with, this is optional date syrup, but it's really good. Just a little bit of date syrup gives it a really nice flavor, whatever tomato sauce you want. But I love this one from whole foods, the fat free marinara. It's so good. And then a flour. So I use lentil flour, but you can use honestly any flour you have just to thicken it up a little bit so that when you actually scoop out a piece, it's like all in, in one thing, you know, and then the top layer is mashed potatoes. So Tracy already taught you that, but the key for me, so I kind of do it similarly, but I just mash it. Oh, and I actually I forgot. So 
and to mash potatoes with cauliflower. So what I did was I steamed, and this was my first time putting cauliflower in, and I really like it. Um, I it steamed just lightens it up a little, right? It yeah, just, and it's like nice, very uh, fluffy. Like yeah. I love, yeah. I love that fluffy. texture. So I steamed the cauliflower actually in the instant pot, which you don't have to, but if you have one, it's so nice because you put it on zero minutes. And as soon as it comes up to pressure, you manually release the pressure. So that means you actually go and release the pressure and it's done. So, but of course you can steam it how you steam anything. So I steamed potatoes and cauliflower and I actually use Yukon Gold. Those are my favorite potatoes. I feel like they're very like buttery. And then you put that in a bowl and you just mash the cauliflower and the potatoes super easy with soy milk, same soy milk that Tracy used. And the key ingredient, and I have a very giant bag here, is the nooch. It gives it a very delicious cheesy flavor. This is my favorite brand, which is Food Alive because it's not fortified, which I really like. I love the flavor. And then you can add miso, which is nice. You can add some salt and whatever spices you really like. I love this spice called, which I ran out of, but I just want to share with you, called, um, it's like onion and herb seasoning from Frontier. It's so good. So I love putting that, but really whatever spice you have, I feel like you can't go wrong with spices. And you put that layer on top and then I made like little fork marks and you see it just stays really well after you bake it. You bake it for about 30 minutes. It even browns and there's no oil in here as well. So that is really nice. So that's my dish. But the funny thing is that we are actually going to have an Asian Thanksgiving tonight with my parents because that's just like my dad bought sake and he was like really excited. So we're like, okay, we'll make it an Asian. So we're going to make sushi. <laughs> um, sushi. Yeah, with brown rice and sweet potatoes. And that's going to be really yummy. But yeah, those are my dishes. So check out the recipe um, on Soul in the Rocks on Instagram. And there's a bunch of recipes there that you can use today or all year long. All right. I do want to share a dessert real quick. Um, mm -hmm. So this year with Tracy's Real Foods, I um, created desserts and sold them. And um, so these are my favorite recipes. So this one is the chocolate tart. This is These are both pumpkin-based but uh, you wouldn't know that it's got um that it's got a lot it's it's based from pumpkin so it's super uh, super healthy and then Can i just uh, say that tracy's desserts are so good like they're packed with beans the one that she sells locally yeah, the cookies. And actually, oh they're so good you you really got to try them seriously so, thank you yeah my cookies are based on lentils uh, oats dates um and you wouldn't know it <laughs> that's all uh, date sweetened and then you can also instead of making a pumpkin pie you can make pumpkin tarts this is pumpkin pie filling with the with the crust is down at the bottom gluten-free and um and then i made plant whip as a product and so this is um it's tofu based but it also has cashews uh it's date sweetened so most of the you can buy um you know vegan whips now which is awesome but most of them are just sweetened with lots of sugar and they're so uh just sugary and um they have no nutrition i like to have nutrition even in my desserts right that so, looks um, so good i'm yeah, trying so to try it plant whip yeah and uh and it's uh yeah like i said you wouldn't know it's tofu but it's tofu based so that means it has protein it doesn't raise your blood sugar like everything else and um and just have fun with it guys so I think, you know, we've covered the bases. You just, you can, you know, have your traditional feel mm -hmm. or just create one dish and have it be your, your celebration, depending on what you're doing, everybody. So everybody stay safe. Um, thank you stay so much. Stay kind and compassionate and safe. Yes, kind. Yes, definitely. And thank you for joining me and thank you for inviting us. And um, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, lazy ladies. That was amazing. And I have to remember that when I watch other people doing lunch break live, I have to eat first because my stomach has been complaining so much watching all these incredible dishes. I definitely want the recipe. 
We'll be posting those on the Facebook page for everyone because it would be a crime against humanity not to have your recipes on there. Incredible. Thank you both so much for doing that. Ah, oh, so yummy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, Tracy. So next I want to introduce a really good friend of mine who has been performing since he was very young. Mike Vandetti is a multi-instrumentalist with a passion for teaching and playing many styles of music on saxophone, bass, and guitar. He is going to wow you right now. You are going to be in the Vandetti Jazz Lounge. Get ready to groove out. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to be here. I'm among so many wonderful people and I loved all the presentations so far. My stomach is rumbling too. That was fantastic. And, you know, it was great to hear Jane Velez Mitchell again. And so I'm just really, really excited to be here. Um, I love that, the Fandetti Jazz Lounge. You are welcome to the Fandetti Jazz Lounge. How is that? Maybe I should start a, po a podcast. <laughs> okay, so um, today's uh, theme, uh, as Vanessa has mentioned, is um, um, BIPOC and LGBTQ community communities honoring them. So I'm going to be doing two pieces of music today that were both composed uh, by musicians that um, were gay. And um, one of them, the, the first song I'm going to play for you is I've Got You Under My Skin by Cole Porter. Now, Cole Porter um, was secretly gay. He didn't, he didn't um, disclose that to many people at all. Um, if you listen to his pieces of music and you study the lyrics, you'll, you'll notice a, a slight ambiguity to them. And um, interesting tidbit here, he has a piece called I Loved Him but he didn't love me. And it's usually sung by a woman. So, um, but now that you know that Cole Porter was gay, you know, it was, it was coming from him. So a lot of his lyrics are coded. Um, so without further ado, and I will, I will reveal who the next composer is once I get to that song. But for right now, I am going to give you, I've got you under my skin, please, Put on those dance shoes, sing along if you know the words, or just kick your feet up and enjoy. Give me one moment here. <laughs> testing, testing. Hey! 
Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you okay. guys so much. Okay. Just going to announce my next tune real quickly. Um, so that was Cole Porter once again. And my next uh, composer I'd like to talk about is Billy Strayhorn. Billy Strayhorn's got a, a large body of work that he's done. Uh, what I'm going to be performing today is probably one of his most famous tunes is um, Take the A-Train. Now, um, uh, as opposed to Cole Porter, Billy Strayhorn was openly gay. He was, you know, very open about it. Um, and um, Billy Strayhorn was black. Um, so he had two communities that, at the time in the early 40s and 50s. Uh, he dealt with a lot of oppression. Um, in, in the jazz scene, it was, um, it, just to mention Miles Davis real quickly, Miles Davis is probably the most famous jazz trumpet player, uh, or definitely one of them. But um, to be a Black jazz musician, uh, anybody before Miles Davis' time, which was the 50s, um, it meant that you, you weren't taken as serious as the, the white musicians. You couldn't be cool like they could because you had to be overly smiley. Think Louis Armstrong, think Dizzy Gillespie and a few other musicians. So when you're on stage, otherwise, if you're not smiling enough as a black musician, then um, critics slammed you for it. And Miles Davis said enough of that and he used a different choice of words. Um, but that's why Miles Davis is so cool and so revolutionary as a personality. Um, so I just wanted to discuss that tidbit on, on um, racism and, and throughout, throughout music um, in the jazz world. Um, I, you know, ironically, though, in the very early world of jazz, we have somebody like Bessie Smith, who was a black woman and she was openly bisexual. Um, and she was from the 20s and, you know, she was a, a blues singer and an amazing singer. Um, and so I think although, you know, um, she, she was dealt with a lot of oppression as well, um, jazz was iconic and revolutionary in bringing everybody together. Um, you know, there were people of all, kids of all different races and orientation, sexual orientations and ethnicities that got together at the record store and just, you know, had a, had a common ground, which was the love of jazz. So um, I think there is really something to be said about the jazz world bringing everybody together. And that's why it holds such a dear place in my heart. Um, and I also just love it. So without further ado, um, the ne next piece of music that I'm gonna be playing is Take the A-Train by Billy Strayhorn. Enjoy, here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much, Mike, for performing. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Much love to you. you and I want to thank everyone. I'm going to be handing over host duties. And Lisa, do you want to say any final words for our ending of our segment of our hosting and introducing our next host. Yes, I do. Thank you, Vanessa. And thank you, Mike. I just loved that jazz piece. And my dad was a jazz musician, so it has a special place in my heart. Now it's time to introduce the dynamic duo who will guide you through the next fun-filled hour. Sean Hill is an award-winning SAG actor, TED speaker, humanitarian, touring spoken word artist, poetry workshop facilitator, and full-time human being who believes in world peace through inner peace and loves events like this that bring and inspire more of it. Please welcome wholeheartedly Sean Hill. Hello, hello, all you beautiful people. Uh, I'm excited to also have uh, Vanessa introduce Jane, I believe. Can we get an introduction for it? Yes, of course. Jane is next on, on my list. <laughs> Jane, Jane Elizabeth is a life, fitness, and career coach, published author, and artist with a passion for plant-based nutrition and helping people find their awesome. So we're so excited to have both of you here. I'll be signing off now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Lisa, uh, Vanessa, you both did an amazing job and I, I feel so much better in my life already. How are you doing over there, Jane? Hey, Sean, I'm doing well. And you know what? I have to say, I'm so grateful for you, but you missed something when it came to your bio. You forgot to say that you are simply an incredible person. So I just want to say I'm so grateful for you, for everything you do for the vegan community. So uh -huh. grateful to be here and thank you to everybody for joining in today. Today is just this reimagined Thanksgiving. It is thanks living where no beings are harmed and we are all inclusive of all beings and we are here for the greater good as a collective vegan community. So thank you, Sean, for being here with me. It just wouldn't be the same without you. You know that? It would it? It just wouldn't. And then you always surprise me with your gratitude and your appreciation of me. So thank you so much for that. And I think you're a wonderful mom. And I'm just grateful for all the moms out there that have done such an amazing job in uplifting and raising their children, especially right now. So much respect and much love to all the mamas out there for sure. Aw, thank you so much, Sean. And you know, yeah, my daughter, you know, she is loving being raised vegan and well, she doesn't know any different. So, um, but she's really having a good time with it. She likes her green juice. You know, she's really, you know, keen on nutrition already at such a young age. She's only four years old. And I love that. And I know um, there's no better way to start this second half of this amazing event than to, you know, talk about nutrition a little bit, talk about health a little bit. Um, because when we take care of ourselves, we can best show up for all of these causes um, that we care so deeply about. And so I'm so, so excited and honored to introduce all of you to John Pierre. We like to call him JP around here. So he is a co-founder of Living With Harmony. And that, for those of you who don't know, is a nonprofit organization. And they embody a sincere effort to heal, inspire, and transform the lives of people animals and the planet through the education of plant-based living. So JP, you're going to demonstrate um, what motor skills are used in food prep. I think sometimes, you know, people don't really give themselves enough credit for, you know, being active in the way they are, you know, every single day. I know, Sean, you're one of those people, you don't give yourself enough credit for anything, quite frankly. That's why I'm here to shower you with, you know, all kinds of compliments. So JP, we are so grateful to have you here. I know you're super busy. Thank you for making the time to share your afternoon with us today. Um, JP, what do you have going on in the kitchen today? 
can hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful presentations, and it was so great to see the music the, and hear the music because it's one of the things that I talk about is in a society, we don't use, um, use musical instruments as, as much anymore. We're not using our fingers. We're not using our body as much. And that's one of the things I want to talk about today. You know, automation and technology have really overtaken our lives. And it's almost as if robots now are actually creating like exercise equipment for us because we live such a robotic life. And everywhere we go, you know, we, we Technology and automation is engineered movement out of our life, and the kitchen is no different than anywhere else. And since we're in the kitchen, most of us three times a day, it's a good meditation break, and it's a good reminder that, hey, when I get in the, in the kitchen, I'm going to focus on making healthy vegan foods. I'm going to be calm, and I'm going to breathe, and I'm going to be focused, but I'm also going to move my body. And I'm going to move my body in parts of my body that I, don't, I, I normally don't move. So one of the things that I like to talk about today is trying to get automation and technology just a little bit out of your kitchen and not all the time, but some of the time. For instance, one of the things when I'm working with clients, I'm constantly encouraging them to eat a lot of legumes, beans, peas, or lentils. Not only are they a great source of fiber for sure, B vitamins and protein, just some of the best amino acids that we can get, especially like limiting amino acids like lysine. And those different amino acids form things in the body like carnitine and, and other things that we need and they enhance um, you know, calcium absorption, protein synthesis. But one of the things is when I ask people to make hummus, most of the time they say, well, I buy it. Well, that's a problem because you're buying plastic right off the bat. So that plastic is not going to be recycled and it's going to be ended up landfills and then in the waterway. But if they do make it at home, they often use a blender and that's convenient. That's fine. But what I'd like to suggest is whether you use canned beans and I don't care if you use canned, it'd be better to make your own in an instant pot because you can buy a big bag and paper of 25 or 50 pounds, and then you don't have to deal with cans and anything. But if most people are going to use cans, I'm asking to use one of the most important tools in your kitchen, and that's a hand can opener. Forget the type of can openers that you put on, you click and boom, and, zzz, and then you don't. No, this little motion here, when you put this on and you have to hand crank that and you have to do 20 revolutions, it's so important because we're losing the ability to grip. There are actually different studies and biomarkers of aging, uh, just like balance and thing, the ability to stand on one leg that tells us how long we're going to live and how functional, but also grip strength is a very important biomarker of longevity. And that's one of the things that we've lost. So make sure that you're using a hand can opener. You can get them very inexpensive and just start using them every time that you're using any sort of canned product. It's very important that you do anything that you can to get that grip strengthened. So do that. And then go ahead and put your garbanzo beans in a bowl and get a hand masher. Mash them by hand. There's no reason you have to have a blender all the time. It'll actually taste better with a little bit of chunks in there. And if you like it creamy, fantastic. Just work a little bit harder. Same thing with your tahini. You can whip it up with a spoon or a fork. This is an amazing product that you can use to just to mash your beans or mashed potatoes, whatever. It's old school, but just like medicine balls and Indian clubs and a lot of things are coming back. They were here a long time ago. They're very important for functional fitness. The other thing that's important is make sure you do your own chopping. Don't go to the store and buy shredded carrots and cut up carrots and cut up, cut up celery. Make sure that you're taking the time to cut up celery, cut up carrots, cut up your vegetables. Get inside there and work that knife. Use your hand. Smell that aroma that comes from that plant. Focus on it. Take your time. A lot of my clients' type A personalities they can't meditate. I said, fantastic. I'm so glad you're not meditating, but I'd like you to get in the kitchen and I'd like you to chop vegetables for two to three minutes a day. Get that two to three minutes of mindfulness there while you're working your hands and working your fingers. So that's a couple important pointers right off the bat. What I do is I use this. This is one of the best tools in the world. Go to a thrift store and buy a rolling pin for a dollar. And you're not going to use this rolling pin necessarily just for food, but you can but use it on your body in the kitchen. It's important to roll out your body. You get adhesions in your body. And the more that you're able to roll your calves, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quadriceps, that's gonna help release some of that tension and adhesions. And as you're pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, you're getting a workout at the same time. So you can get one of these at the, just at a thrift store and then you could keep it separate from the one you use. But this is one of the best inventions ever. The other thing we wanna do is get yourself a tennis ball, okay, just a tennis ball. And every day that you're in the kitchen, put it on the floor. Hopefully you're in your bare feet because we all wear shoes or we should say you're wearing basically a cast. 
because our foot should be open up. If you look at Aboriginal people's feet, they're opened up. If you look at our feet, they're, com they're, they're pressed together because they'd be compressed in shoes. So get this tennis ball, put it on the floor, and get used to rolling your feet. Get those adhesions out. Get that plantar fascia rolled out. Roll it in different directions. Just make sure that you make sure you pick up the ball so you don't fall on it. But just when you're in the kitchen, it's very easy to just roll when you're waiting for your pasta to cook or whatever you're doing, just a little bit of rolling back and forth. Now, a lot of the uh, people that I work with have coordination and balance issues. So I do a lot of coordination drills for them and I have them use a ball and all I ask them to do is just bounce that ball, catch that ball, bounce that ball, catch that ball. Now try to do it as you're moving just to do little bits of coordination things that can work your body and your mind and your reflexes because most of our day is sedentary. And once COVID hit, everybody's inside all the time. Neurologically, they're not being stimulated anymore. You want your brain and your nervous system to be like the 4th of July, constantly going off. You don't wanna get what we call sensory motor amnesia where your body is basically going to sleep all day because all you're doing is sitting or lying down in a bed. So a tennis ball will add to that. And one of the best things that we can do is get a, an exercise band. If we have an exercise band, I, I mean, th the possibilities are endless. This is pretty much what I use with 100% of my clients. There's really no exercise in a gym that you can't do with an exercise band. So one of the first ones that I like people to do is just put the band behind your back, give it up here, and just practice a standing push-up. That's all. They're just going to do a standing push-up like this. And these bands are very thick, depending which ones you get. This is a TheraBand. It's called the CLX. And it actually, inside of it, it has handles. So the handles are hidden everywhere you go here. So I can put my hands in there. So I can do, that's basically a push-up, what I just showed you. But you can also just take the bands here, and you can stand on them. And of course, I can do curls. I can do military presses, right? I can work my deltoids. I can do a million different exercises. I can just take the band here and here and just do my very best to try to get it into a ball to work my grip strength again, because most people, again, do not have good, strong a grip. Now, one of the things that I would say is I want you to think about people who lived hundreds of years ago. Think about the caloric expenditure that was needed to make, uh, let's say, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Basically, in peanut butter and jelly sandwich, they have to have wheat, so they have to plant wheat. The wheat have to grow. They have to use the sickle to cut the wheat. They have to shuck the wheat. They have to take the wheat and quarter and, and mash it up into flour. Then they have to make bread. They have to knead the bread. I mean, imagine all these calories. Then they have to chop wood to bake the bread. Then they have to get nuts, open them up, grind them into peanut butter. Then they have to pick berries, right? Then they have to mash that. So imagine the caloric expenditure that was needed to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich hundreds of years ago. And kids today walk into the freezer, they take out frozen, they come in boxes, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, they put them in a microwave or a toaster oven, and it's done. No caloric expenditure. I mean, it's unbelievable. You have to realize that our lifestyle is not conducive anymore to movement. So you have to do everything in your power. And this may sound kind of funny, but to make your life a little bit more difficult not necessarily a little bit easier. I hope that makes sense. Um, a couple other things. One of the things that we're missing the most in our life today is, is love and compassion. And I think every time that you come into the kitchen, let that be a signal for you that this is the time to breathe, to decompress, to relax, to be very grateful and thankful for all that you have. I mean, do you know how difficult it would be for you to go out and try to make a knife like this or a cutting board? How difficult and time consuming it is to, to get a grocery items if you were to grow them yourself. So if you could just always have that attitude of gratitude. Um, I like to say for me, Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving for most people, it's like mm, Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. It just repeats every day. That's how I like to be. I just like to have 24 hours, 365 days a year of being grateful and appreciative for all that I have, no matter what it is. And when I go into the kitchen, it's the same thing. I want to be so grateful for the food I have. I want to be grateful that I have the ability to hold the knife and chop food. And I want to just have that constant attitude of gratitude around everything I do, all expressions of life I want to honor. I don't care what race somebody is, what, what political affiliation, if they're a man or woman, if they're elderly or kids, or if they're an animal or a rock, I want to give them love and compassion. And the more that we can infuse ourselves with that, the more that's going to go into other beings and they'll be able to feel that energy, which is really critical. 
So please just remember, sneak as much movement as you can into your life. Get yourself some post-it notes and just make a note right on there. Sneak push-ups in off the counter. Use some exercise bands. Put Be loving, be kind, be grateful, be thankful. Put those all around your kitchen and your home just for now to remind you to have that attitude of gratitude. So I hope that helps. And thank you guys so much for having me today. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you so much, JP. And we are so grateful for you and everything you do. Your message of love and compassion is so incredible. Thank you for that. And I love that you mentioned these things that are so actionable because people can go into their kitchens today and use a handheld can opener. I will have you know, I've never had an electric one. Um, so that is something that you know I do all the time. I chop vegetables and fruits with my daughter. She loves it. So kids, for the parents out there, children love to be a part, an active part of what you're doing. So when you include them, she'll say, mom, I want to chop too. And okay, so I give her a butter knife because, you know, she's four, but, you know, she likes to have her own little cutting board. She has a green one that she loves. She gets up on the chair right next to me and she likes to, you know, do her own chopping, do her own cutting. She absolutely loves it. Um, she doesn't know any other way. So that's just how we do things around here. And she absolutely loves that time. And it gives us time to bond together over food. And this is over whole food, um, plant-based, vegan, delicious food that nourishes our bodies. And we are practicing those motor skills without her even realizing it. And it's a good chance for kids to learn about food and nutrition um, without them even realize they're learning, right? Because sometimes, you know, when we don't even know that we are being educated, we are so open to it. We're open to this idea of learning things we don't know yet. So thank you, JP, for that message and for everything you do because you're such a kind and compassionate person. I love your attitude of gratitude. And like you said, we should be grateful every single day. Start your day with gratitude, end your day with gratitude, and I guarantee you, you will have a much happier life. So Sean, I know you are gonna introduce the next um, performer, the next guest uh, for us. So take it away, Sean, and um, we'll get to our, our next guest. Oh my God, of course. I, I, I'm just so, again, amazed that JP even turned the kitchen into a gym, which is probably the only place we'll like to smell good after a gym workout, to be honest. So that was amazing. Again, shout out to JP. Uh, next up, we will have Donna Benjamin, who will be introducing us to Native American rituals around the flute pieces she'll perform. She is a vegan lifestyle coach, poet, musician, and activist ready like Jane Velez Mitchell said, to take it up a few notches and get the message out. Please welcome everybody, Donna Benjamin. Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. So as vegans, we are all about debunking myths and we're just, I'm just gonna start out with Thanksgiving. We know that it's, as vegans, we're saying thanks living because the history of this holiday is not one of, of beauty and grace. It's, it's one of, of tragedy and sadness and so, that is the history that a lot of people don't focus on. And we're not gonna focus on that from here on out, but knowing something is how we heal. When we know the truth of what has happened, then we can heal and we can move on. So as we move into this wonderful, wonderful concept and, and delivery of thanks living, I am so grateful. I wanna briefly talk about the values of the Lakota people, praying, respect, caring and compassion, honesty and truth, generosity and caring, humility and wisdom. These things are things that encompass how the Lakota people do things in their life. And so um, as we think about those things, we think about those are the values of being vegan as well, especially the caring and compassion. So we have a lot of things in common. We all do all over the world. We have things in common about grace and love and caring. A tradition and a ritual in the native ways is to always thank people. So as I play my Native American courting flute in a few moments, I have to thank David Night Eagle, who was the maker. He was, he's Lakota. He learned as a little child. He never, you know, went, went to a class. He learned by an elder's side how to make his flutes and he's an excellent tuner. I have to thank David Darling, who is my mentor, teacher, friend, who taught me how to improvise and how to love my music. So these are things that in the native ways, we thank people. We, I need to thank, you know, Paige, 
who I met three years ago and who has introduced me to this amazing group of vegan activists and to Vanessa for inviting me to this wonderful, wonderful thing. So always thank people, always, always be in that gratitude. And so uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a few pieces and in between I'm going to uh, do a chant because this day is about deep, deep love and gratitude for each other, for the animals and for the earth. And what the Native Americans did with the Native American courting flute, the Native American young men used to court the young women with this beautiful instrument. And once you hear it, you'll understand why they were wooed. <laughs> and here's a beautiful poem about it. I was one part of a red cedar standing high on a high mountain. I was taken by a young man whittled and given a sweet voice. I became the night voice of the young man speaking to his sweetheart, singing his tender thoughts. So the native ways they use this for wooing and courting. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, play, this is the C flute and this part what I'd like you to do, you're welcome to close your eyes. And this is on, in honor of all the animals. And as you're thinking and breathing into this flute piece, what I'd like you to do is just to send absolute prayers and deep devotion as you already are to the animals. And as the breath is flowing through the flute, that breath will be carried all the way around the world. And this is a thank you chant for all that you all do. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the friends I've made. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. 
I want to thank you for all the friends I've made. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the prayers I prayed. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the prayers I prayed. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all that you do. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. And the animals thank you too. And the animals thank you too. Yes, the animals thank you too. This next piece is a celebratory piece. As much as we know what's going on in the world and it's so challenging and so painful and so hurtful, we must be in the joy and we must spread the joy and we must spread the education. So this piece is a celebratory one. You're welcome to get up and dance. You're welcome to do anything that projects joy into the world. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
Oh, Metapias, and we are all related. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Donna Benjamin, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Um, I couldn't help but feel extremely good in that moment of acknowledging our history, acknowledging the people's history that are originally here. Uh, thank you for that. I also included a quick um, little uh, text number where you can find out the name of the native indigenous people that lived, that originally lived in your city, in your town, wherever you're at. So please be sure to check that out. And last but not least, before the next person that Jane will introduce, I figured the two quotes that are perfect for this moment is that James Baldwin, uh, amazing gay black author and activist in his time, he says, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And last but not least, he also says the paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which they are being educated. So I think it is a beautiful, beautiful segment just now by Donna that helps us educate ourselves on the true world that we're living in. And I think that's just amazing. So thank you again, Donna Benjamin. Thank you again. And please, Jane, take us away for the next artist or presenter. Thank you so much, Sean. And Donna, that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. I could have listened to you all day. It was just absolutely amazing. So thank you. And for people who are wondering about the, the number that Sean entered, it is in the chat here on this Zoom meeting. We will also make sure that we put it in the comments on the Facebook Live so that people can text to see um, what Indigenous people lived in their area. Um, so, and this is something that you can do um, to, to learn your history, to learn the history of this land because it is important. We may not be able to change the past, but it is important to learn about the past, learn from it, um, and continue on in an inclusive, compassionate, kind manner in the future. So um, up next, speaking of the future, I know sometimes it feels like no matter what we do, we can't possibly do enough because um, it is daunting to look at the world um, right now because it is far from being a vegan world. That's what we want to create. That is what everybody here um, in this meeting would love to see is a vegan world. We are working towards that. It is easy sometimes though to feel like, you know, we're just one person, just one person. We can't possibly do enough to make that happen. There's so much suffering, but we can. Every single time we uh, spend money, every dollar we spend, we vote for the type of world we want to create. And so it is so important to pay attention to what you are purchasing, to really pay attention to where your money is going. And up next, we have two incredible guests. We have Jonathan Ohayan and Cecily Montoya. Um, Jonathan from The Fake Movement. He is a vegan activist and entrepreneur, and he has a fake movement, which is absolutely wonderful. It is fashion for animal kingdom and the environment and Cecily. And together, not only do they have the fake movement where they are really bringing together people in the vegan community um, for fashion, showing how you can use your money to purchase goods that are made ethically, goods that are made um, using sustainable resources and goods that cause no harm to the animals, um, goods that are made that are cruelty free. So they are doing that. In addition, they are so creative. They have actually come together for something super incredible. And I believe they're going to perform for us as well. So they are um, together, Yon Sili, and it is absolutely so touching to hear them perform. I cannot wait for all of you to experience this. If you're experiencing it for the first time, um, you will be amazed. And if you have heard them before, you know how absolutely wonderful they are. So take it away, Jonathan and Cecily. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, to say something really quick. Uh, what Sean said is actually exactly what I think that it's all about education, educating ourselves. And, uh, and in like you asked me to talk about fashion, so that's, that's what I know the most. And there's so many new alternatives, so many positivity in fashion. Uh, people of color are getting more represented. Um, people uh, working uh, uh, start to have better, um, uh, better fair, fair uh, trade and, and you can uh, easily now uh, track 
who's doing your your garment and uh, and yeah i wanted to focus thank you uh, uh, yeah to, to say thank you to mainly the social media because now thanks to social media you can actually share all this information that's what we are doing today uh, thanks to that we are actually showing all the positivity and and be able to bring awareness and uh, and so yeah i think we should be thankful for this platform that is free it's 100 percent free and you can share knowledge you can help people to educate themselves thanks to that so yeah if i if i have something that i have to be thankful for is this and uh, and also i wanted to say especially now with all the holiday seasons and everything um, if you go check on fakemovement.com there is a page called the fakers you will find hundreds of uh, brands that are 100% vegan and 100% ethical. So if you want to purchase something, I will push you to go there and to check all these amazing vegan and ethical brands. Um, so yes, yeah, so like that you can, like you say, vote with your money for a better world. And um, yeah, we're gonna do a song. I let you introduce it. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you for all the efforts you're doing to so we are able to have a better world, a world that is better for animals, for ourselves, for the environment. And we want to share this song with you. Uh, we are grateful for love. Uh, we personally think that when you do things with love as your motive, there's nothing that can go wrong and um yeah we want to share this song with you <laughs> with you thank you for everything. thank you so much jonathan and cecily it is amazing to have you here we so so appreciate you so thank you happy thanks living it is so amazing to have you part of the speaking community thank you for all you do for the animals and the environment and all of us here 
Thank you so much. And so we have um, somebody coming up next because we have um, Reverend Sarah Bowen, and she is going to share something here. This is a really neat presentation. It is audiovisual animal meditation. We're really excited to have her here because she is an animal chaplain. She is a faculty member at One Spirit Interfaith Seminary and an award-winning author of Spiritual Rebel. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy of that book, and we are just so honored to have you here. So Reverend, please take it away whenever you are ready. Yeah, Jane, I will get you a copy of that. Thank <laughs> we'll you. I appreciate right that. Out. Yeah. So I'm so grateful to be here. I, I don't like Thanksgiving very much. I never have as a kid. And I have totally reframed that today here with all of you. I was the one who sat through Thanksgiving um, sucking down bottles of wine. Uh, so I didn't have to handle any of the stuff that was going on around me. I'm a 12-step or two. Uh, so it's so nice to be someplace that's comfortable, that, that kind of shares these values that we're talking about today. Um, I woke up and I got out my Hanukkah mug earlier. It says Oive all day because I was having a hard time dealing with the memes that were coming my way and the pictures of people's dinners and all of that. And I was like, come on, stop. Um, turkey pardoning. What is that, right? Um, the I'm giving thanks for the animal that gave its life for me. What is that, right? So we have some alternatives for these things. We do. Um, and so as somebody who's interfaith, I like to pull from a lot of different places. And today, what I want to offer you all is something I call Animal Divina. And it's a five-minute meditation. Um, if you heard JP say don't meditate, you can move while you do this. If you guys want to do push-ups while we're doing meditating, that's okay too. Um, or I suggest just kind of taking some deep breaths, uh, taking a look at the screen, connecting to the more than human world, uh, and see what comes up for you. We've talked a lot about feeding our bodies, and we've done a little bit of feeding our minds and our spirits as well. So this is a little bit more of that. Okay, and here we go.
So I watch this every morning and it's a reminder for me that what I do is important. Uh, there is a reminder that there is beauty in the natural world, there's beauty in the animal world, and there's pain there as well. And so if you'd like to know more about animal chaplaincy, what the heck that is, um, if you'd like to learn more about interspecies spirituality or the spiritual capacity that animals have, um, I will throw my website into the chat, modernreverend.com. Come check it out. There's a lot going on there. And thanks uh, for you all for having me. Thank you so much, Reverend. That was absolutely incredible. And, you know, when it comes to those animals, especially the, the, the kitty cat, it was just beautiful to see everything. I especially noticed the rainbow behind the, the elephants, which was so peaceful and relaxing, just watching them in their natural habitat. That was incredible. The little um, kitty that was, a, I think, a, a stray, probably, and, and a puppy. Then I wanted to go and just scoop them up. And I think that's um, a human being's natural instinct is to want to leave the wild animals, be in their natural habitat. And the ones that have been domesticated, but just left behind to go and, and save them. And they really end up rescuing us. And if people just um, really tap into who they are at their core being as a human being, as an earthling on, on this planet, we will come to that, all of us together and, and care for the animals and the environment. Thank you so much for sharing that. It was absolutely beautiful and just so peaceful and so relaxing. And that was exactly what we needed right now. So thank you. I'm gonna have Sean take it away to introduce our next guest, the incredible Brittany Michelson. Sean, I know you have a very special connection with Brittany and um, I'm so, so excited to hear what she Emma is going to read for us. And I'm really excited for your intro actually, because um, I know that you have a, a very special place in her heart and she has a very special place in yours. Sean, take it away. Jane, we're, we're not getting married, Jane, slow down. That sounded so intense right there. <laughs> but no, absolutely much respect. Thank you for that. Uh, we have an official book reading from the author and editor that this book just hit stores online and officially at Barnes & Noble this year from our next presenter, Brittany Michelson. She's a teacher, writer, and animal rights activist whose first book, Voices for Animal Liberation, was published in March. And I have had the privilege and honor to work with her as well and see her work in activism up close firsthand. Please welcome Brittany Michelson, everybody. Thank you so much, Sean and Jane, and all of the organizers, thank you for including me in this wonderful event. So this is my book. I'm just going to hold it up and show it to everybody. Many of you are familiar with it already, but the full title is Voices for Animal Liberation, Inspirational Accounts by Animal Rights Activists. And it is an anthology of stories and personal essays by animal rights activists, both very established voices and newer voices. So it's a, it's a great combination and a great range of diverse voices. And it was released in March of this year by Skyhorse Publishing and it's available to order on multiple sites, the Skyhorse website, Amazon, Barnes and Noble and others. So if anybody is interested in ordering a copy for yourself or for a family member or friend as a gift this holiday season, uh, please consider it. Again, here it is. And yeah, and Sean is one of my contributors. Sean has the only poem in the book, which is at the end. And it's, it's a beautiful poem by Sean Hill. So I am going to start by reading the dedication um, because I wanted to share this all with you. So here's my dedication. This book is dedicated to all of the exploited animals whose liberation is my greatest dream and to the humans who are working hard to make this dream a reality. And so for today's reading, I'm going to read some parts from my introduction so here is my introduction to the book. And I'm gonna skip around a little. As an animal rights activist, it is common to hear remarks such as, what about human rights? Don't you care about humans? 
There are so many human problems in the world. Let's solve those first. There's a widespread view that our own issues should be solved before animal issues are addressed. As if we need to demonstrate loyalty to our own species before advocating on behalf of others. This promotes the ideology of human superiority and reinforces a disconnect between humans and non-humans. What we should be acknowledging is our interconnectedness. The fact that all beings have the capacity for love, joy, pain, and fear. Animal rights and human rights are inextricably connected. For example, there are multiple human and environmental issues that stem from animal issues. If we want to create a peaceful world, we must pay close attention to the ways in which human and non-human issues are related and honor the interdependence between our species and others. Societal conditioning has taught us that certain animals are to love and other animals are to eat, wear, and use. Speciesism is the assumption of human superiority and involves the designation of values or special consideration solely on the basis of species classification. Speciesism is what underlies the notion that a dog is a beloved member of the family while the purpose of a chicken is to be eaten. Civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, and other social justice causes have people who fight for their own rights, the rights of their loved ones, and those of their fellow citizens. Human rights movements operate from the ability of humans to use words and actions to stand up for their cause. The animal rights movement is the sole exception. Non-human beings do not have the benefit of being able to speak for themselves or organize a protest, although they do resist being harmed, as is evident by their struggle, their vocalizations, and their attempts at escape. At escape. These are their forms of protest. Yet animals are disregarded because of their inability to communicate in our language, which makes them entirely dependent upon humans to prevent their exploitation. We hold the unique position of being both their greatest threat and their only hope. This is a time in history when the stories of the marginalized have risen to the surface. As a species that has the ability to advocate for others, we have a moral imperative to protect the most innocent and vulnerable among us and to inspire others to take action. Animal rights activism is an obligation for living on a planet where humanity dominates and uses non-human animals in every conceivable way for food, fashion, experimentation, and entertainment. The multifaceted objective of the animal rights movement is to denormalize violence against animals, change the deeply rooted mentality of speciesism, honor that non-human animals are individuals, establish rights on their behalf, and liberate them from suffering. The liberation of non-human beings is vital to the whole of the planet's success and is necessary for peace on Earth. The activists who are featured in this collection believe that being vegan is the least we can do and that engaging in activism is necessary. Vegan chef, wellness coach, and writer Tracy Narayni Glover said, fundamentally, vegans advocate for the values that all social justice movements uphold. They focus on the non-humans, but what they are really advocating for is a society in which no sentient being is used as a means to another's end. They are fighting for the elimination of all forms of prejudice and oppression. It is a profound decision to commit ourselves to living vegan, which enables us individually to diminish animal suffering and concurrently reduce our carbon footprint. Yet it's a decision on another level to stand up boldly for what one believes in, which often requires putting our comfort levels aside 
and in some cases, our freedom on the line to make our cause heard. Being an activist is necessary for the message we seek to convey to the public, that animals are individuals with their own sense of purpose and that they deserve the right to their lives. There is a growing unit on the front line of this rising movement, armed with compassion and a strong belief in justice for all beings. As animal rights activists, we are committed to standing up for those who are viewed by society at large as products, as commodities to be used. Those who through tradition and conditioning are deemed unworthy of rights. This collection spotlights diverse voices in the animal rights movement with the intention of inspiring those who are sparked by the vision of a more ethical world. From attending protests and marches, engaging in public outreach, spearheading campaigns, bearing witness, doing open rescue, holding demonstrations and establishing sanctuaries, animal rights activism takes on multiple forms. I am honored to be part of the animal rights community, to be among a passionate, dedicated group of humans devoted to taking action for those who cannot take action for themselves. Anyone from any walk of life can join a movement and become an activist. It is my hope that these stories will inspire and empower you to take action for a cause that you greatly value. Let our voices be heard and our actions be bold. So again, um, here's the book. Thank you so much to the hosts um, and to the organizers for including me in this wonderful event, Voices for Animal Liberation. Again, it's available on multiple sites to order if you just Google the title. Um, I'm Brittany Michelson, author and editor, and I have 27 contributors in the book. And I think it would make uh, a wonderful gift for somebody this holiday season, uh, for anybody who's interested. So thank you so much. Brittany! Thank you so much, Brittany. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you. We are so blessed to have so many amazing people here today. I'm just popping on really quickly to invite the anyone from the team to come on and say goodbye and thank you. And I'm going to be letting uh, Sean and Jane Elizabeth say, introduce our final sound healing uh, guru who's coming on at the end, which is going to be really, really amazing for those who can stay. If you can't stay on, we completely understand. Hope you have a wonderful time. But I just want to thank the entire organizing team for all their great efforts, Dave Rubin and Alan and Woo. Melissa Clerk and all the people on there who just put in so much time and effort to make this happen. Thank you to all our amazing guests, performers, speakers. You all just so brightened our community, our lives. I'm so grateful to have you all here. Thank you all for watching. Please share and have a beautiful, compassionate and kind rest of your thanks living. Yes, it was such a treat to spend this time together. We really created this sacred space and thanks to everyone. And I'm excited about the grand finale. So I'm eager to hear, tell, tell us more about it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for being here today and sharing your thanks, living with us, this wonderful reimagined Thanksgiving. Thank you to David and Lisa and Vanessa for putting this together for organizing. Um, you have done such a fantastic job. Again, um, to echo what Vanessa said and what Lisa said, thank you to everybody um, who you know, committed the time to be here for the beautiful reading from Brittany um, and the, the meditation with the animals and all the, the performers. This was just such an amazing day. I love this reimagined, more inclusive Thanksgiving, thanks living because this is something that I would love to see continue on as a tradition is this sacred space for humans, for the animals, for peace. I love this. Peace truly does begin with what you put on your plate. So um, up next, Sean, you know, we have something really special and I almost feel like Vanessa did such a great job introducing her because Melissa Breslow, she said she is a sound healing guru, right? <laughs> Yeah. I just made that up, but she is. That sounds amazing. Yeah. No, Sean, um, you, <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. 
Yeah, yeah, no, we were talking about how much I love baths. And uh, and and I, if anything, I am grateful for baths. I'm grateful for all of you, of course, as a community. But I mean, what's better than taking a bath with your community and it not being weird, you know? So I think uh, a sound <laughs> Too late. It's too late. It already got weird because you said what's better than taking a bath with your community. Well, there is a type of bath we won't get in trouble for, and that is a sound bath. <laughs> and I, I'm grateful for you, Sean, and thank you for being here with us today and for, you know, keeping it light because I just love your sense of humor. You know exactly. <laughs> to make everybody. Before I forget, my, my favorite quote I love to share with people is that it's better to light a candle than to curse the dark. So in terms of loving people that are the hardest to love right now, I hope that helps someone out there, all right? Keep loving people. Keep loving. Yes. Keep loving because love really is the answer. I agree with you, Sean. That is just such an incredible message um, because you just never know. You know, there are people who are going to try to to dim your shine. You just never know when somebody just needs to borrow a bit of your light. So keep shining as brightly as you possibly can because that is exactly what the world needs now, today, and always. And, you know, truly, you know, be that light for everybody. So Melissa is the founder of Open Eyes Foundation, vice president of VegFest LA. Um, she's a yoga teacher. She's a sound and energy healer with a passion um, for really creating a community and, and you know, a cre a creating a community of support so that she can guide new vegans um, on a positive path. And that is so important because sometimes we forget that we were not always vegan. There are pre-vegans, right? So we need to reach them. That is so incredibly important. So we're going to have Melissa take it away with a sound bath. And maybe you can for people who don't know what that is. Melissa, will you explain what this is? Yes. You get going. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored to be here. It's been such a beautiful show. And I really love what you guys were just saying saying and Sean your quote fit perfectly because guru means to bring the darkness to the light and something I really believe about the darkness to the light is that nobody can do it for you all the answers are always within um, people can help guide you and show you you know but really it comes from within so that's so that's so beautiful so it's really the guru within so thank you for, for saying that. Um, and I'm sending so much love and gratitude. Um, let's start by sitting up nice and tall. We're going to do a little bit of breath. And you can feel free to lay down if you want. A sound bath is being bathed by the vibrations, by the goodness, by the frequencies of sound to heal you in a deep cellular level. So it can get rid of anxiety. Um, sometimes I just go into a deep sleep. Uh, and other times I have some profound um, vision. Uh, it can be anything, uh, but just as long as you really enjoy it and feel blissful. So I hope that I can bring that to you today. If you're new to this, um, welcome. So let's just start by sitting up nice and tall and focus on the breath. Inhales deep and slow and slowly exhale. And let's connect our sits bones to the earth and picture our root chakra. So our roots are descending down into the center of Mother Gaia, really connecting, knowing we are one with the earth, with the plants, with the trees, with the nourishment of the soil, with the pulse of the mother, the heartbeat. And feel that coming up, that beautiful earth energy into your soul. And feel a string pulling the crown of your head nice and tall, to the heavens, to the light, to the sun. And let's take a deep inhale, bringing in that root chakra energy, bringing it up the spine, up the chakras. And exhale out the crown of your head, to the heavens, to the moon, to the stars. And inhale in that sunlight energy, bringing it slowly down, filling up your being with all that healing light and exhale out through the roots to the root chakra, back to Mother Gaia. And inhale in through the nose, all of that beautiful earth energy, that grounding energy, and bring it into the heart. And exhale out, unconditional love. Beautiful, and feel that grounding. Take a moment to become present, to welcome yourself 
into this moment, into the now. Remember to breathe through your day. And let's go ahead and rub our hands together till you feel that heat, energy, vibration. And we're gonna do a little tapping, tap on the top of the head with the tips of the fingers. Wake everything up. Wake up brain and the face, the neck, the throat, and up and down the arms. Some blood flow for all this beautiful meals we're gonna have today. Chest, get the belly, the organs, the back, the kidneys. Go ahead and straighten out the legs and up and down the legs. Get the knees, the feet, the hips. Beautiful, and let's take a deep inhale, bringing our arms up, look up, smile, inhale more, inhale more, and deep sigh, shake it out, ah, let everything go, whew, beautiful, and again, let's take a deep inhale, reaching our arms up to the heaven, look up, smile, and just breathe here with your arms in a giant V, you are a human funnel for all the love, for all the light, for all the blessings, for the pouring into your heart, for that flame igniting and getting brighter and expanding, and smile. Smile so big, so bright. This tricks your brain to be happy in any situation. Just smile so big and shine that bright heart, beautiful, open for receiving and giving love. And take a deep inhale, stretch, stretch, reach, reach, reach. And exhale, bringing your hands to your heart. Let's bring all that love and healing inside. Go ahead and close your eyes. And set an intention, something positive you want to bring into your life. It can be a positive thought pattern. Focusing on the breath. It can be a community, building community, an activity. Think about your dreams, your goals, and see them as if they've already been done successfully. Bringing that into your heart. And go ahead and get comfortable. You can lay down.
And let's end with an Om and three Shantis. Let's open our arms nice and wide, called cactus arms, spreading the fingers. And we're gonna send this peace, healing, love, and light to our planet to send healing and see all at its best. Take a deep inhale. Om Shanti 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 Namaste Blessings and have a happy thanks living. Yay! <laughs> oh, thank you, Melissa. How wonderful. Our souls are just reverberating with that lovely sound. And your, your ohm at the end was just divine. So to do our final closing, we've got Dave Rubin, who helped us begin in the early part of our program today, and he's going to sign us off. Hello, everyone again. Hey, did anyone else notice that our event was a sandwich with two Melissa's on each, with a Melissa on each end and some Janes in the middle, as well as a bunch of other lovely people? <laughs> I want to thank everybody so much. It really it was dozens of us who came together and made this what it was in a challenging year. I think we were, were able, I perceive we were able to offer something really very special to our community. Thank you so much for all your love, for all your creativity, for all your expression. And I hope to see many of you live next year at Rancho Park. So much love for everybody. Thanks again. Thanks to everyone.